Welcome back to Real Faith Conversations, and in this show we try to talk about life, culture, and faith in the most genuine way possible. My name is Ryan Morris, and I am here with Marissa Pulowski, a parishioner at St. Peter for six years now, who serves as a Eucharistic minister weekly at the 5 p.m. Saturday Mass, or the 11 a.m. Saturday Mass, or Sunday Mass, I should say. And today she's going to be talking about finding companionship in the church. Welcome, Marissa. I am very happy to be here. A little nervous, but it's all good. It's all good. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's your first time on the show. How do you feel? Excited. You know, I've been playing along on the social media, if you will, <laughs> seeing all the different podcasts pop up, and I was really excited that you reached out to ask me to, to take part in that. So thank you. For sure. Yeah, we're trying to bring on everyday parishioners, right, from all walks of life, including yours. And just seeing their story, right? Talking yeah. about different topics. Right now, you're going to be talking about companionship and finding friends in the church mm -hmm. and a little bit about your story. But before we get into that, let me just hear about yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, I now live in Honeybrook with my husband, Jim. Uh, Jim and I have been married. It'll be 18 years this October. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we... Um, Prior to Saint, moving over to St. Peter's, we were members of uh, St. Stanislaus and St. Joe's in Coatesville. Nice. That was my husband's childhood parish. And the church at St. Stanislaus actually had a stained glass window with his grandfather's name on it. Oh my so that was gosh. like, really, they are born and bred Coatesville. Um, I grew up in Northeast Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I'm a proud graduate of St. Hubert Catholic High School for Girls. Go Bambies. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Went to college at DeSales University. 16 years of Catholic school right oh here. Oh my gosh. And uh, my children are continuing that tradition with um, my son Danny is in seventh grade at uh, Pope John Paul. I believe he's in one of your classes. Yes, he he, we just started this past week. Let yeah. me know if he gives you any trouble. For sure. I'll be emailing you. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy is at Bishop Shanahan. So it's wonderful. And Danny started to be um, an altar server also. So we're both kind of diving into to participate a little bit more in our faith. That's awesome. So Northeast, actually, I was born in Northeast. I know. Yeah. I talk to your mom you talk about to my this mom? all the time. Yeah. We love to talk about all the different parishes, who's from where, and all this stuff. Yeah. Northeast Philadelphia is a wonderfully small, but it's like a small town in a city. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people that say, oh, yeah, I'm from Northeast Philly. I'm like, what? I know. Yeah. So many people. Cool. So, yeah, thank you for telling us about you, and thank you for your ministry here, right? And as a Eucharistic minister, and I'm sure you'll find other things to do as you're more active in the parish <laughs> as well. Um, so let's, let's dive into companionship. What, uh, what sort of drew you into this church and kind of finding your own little cliques and people that you talk to here? Well, you know what? I think um, when I first moved out here, it's, it's hard to join a new parish sometimes because you feel like, and that's true no matter what parish you're joining because there's always a history to that parish. Mm -hmm. um, like, so I grew up, I was part of St. Jerome's and you know, that's its own parish here. And then we came out here to St. Joe's. My husband, fa my husband's family is part of it. And I was like, okay, so I fit in here. But when we came over to, to St. Peter's, my parents are actually um, parishioners here as well. They moved out this way about 14 years ago. From the Northeast? From the Northeast. Oh, nice. So they're here. They're members of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. But, um, so look, we knew them, but it just, it's like, okay, I know, you know, Father Fitzpatrick always talks about being welcome and feeling welcome, but it took me five years before I actually decided to actively participate in that welcome, mm -hmm. if you will. Like we would go to mass on Sundays and, you know, I always felt like, um, that St. Peter's was a place where you could come in and just, you know, be part of the community. Mm -hmm. But in order to really build up those relationships and friendships, you kind of have to step outside of your comfort zone, if you will. And that's really, that's what I wanted to talk about. The past year, I have stepped out of my faith comfort zone. <laughs> in, a, in a couple of ways, it still surprised even me. And that um, have just really been wonderful in terms of giving me things that I didn't know that I was looking for and that I needed. And isn't that just how the Holy Spirit works? Where it's for like, sure. hey. So I actually wound up, you know how every, uh, like a lot of times, not every, but it's always in the bulletin, but Father will talk about Tuesday adoration mm -hmm. and the rosary. So I know, and I think it's always in the back of my head, Tuesday, 6 p.m. is adoration at the church. And I never went. Mm -hmm. Never. Until last year when there was track practice this is, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm accident. I've accidentally 
become more participatory in my faith and have become, you know, more um, active. The whole reason I started going to adoration and, and the rosary mm-hmm. is because track practice was across the street at Pope John Paul. <laughs> and I got bored sitting in my car when it was too rainy to walk outside. So I figured I could either sit in my car by myself or I could come over and sit in church. And I was like, okay. So it was around this time, March <laughs> of 2021, I said, okay, so... Danny's running, and I said, all right, like, he's sixth grade. I don't need to watch him run. It's fine. So I walked over to church, and I sat in the very back as, you know, people were saying the rosary. And, of course, I realized I had forgotten a lot of things about the rosary, like how it starts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, the Apostles' Creed, I'm like, what? what is this? And I don't actually have a rosary, so, like, not physically with me. I do own rosaries. But I was, what am I doing here? But I sat there for the rosary, and at the very end, you know, um, there was this little red book mm-hmm. and the Deacon Todd came over and was like, are you going to be staying? And I was like, Oh no, thank you. Bye. <laughs> I, I ran out like, Oh, I don't know what he's handing me. So the next week again, it was like kind of rainy or cold or whatever it was. And I'm like, Oh, do I feel like power walking or saying the rosary? Hmm? I'll say the rosary, the rosary instead of working out. This, this there is, it is. there you go. Weigh I'm the like, options, working out and exercising, saying the rosary, rosary. So I went in again I said, okay, like, this is okay. Like, I'll say this again. And Father, I just, again, passed on the little red book. I don't know what this is. And I left. And that week, I remembered to bring my rosary. So I did this for about, like, four or five weeks, just sitting in the back. Then I said to my husband, I think I'm going to stay this time. So, like, can you can you pick Danny up? I think I'm going to stay. He's like, okay, what are you staying for? I'm like, I don't know. There's this little red book. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what's inside the I red book. I want to see what's inside the little <laughs> red book. And Jim's like, oh, Okay. So instead of sitting in the very back, I sat in the very back pew of the first section. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, I'm still in the back. So I'm sitting there and I, I get the little red book when I sit in there and we, we say the rosary. And I'm like, good, you know, I have everything going. I'm still learning the, the Fatima prayer and, you know, what are the different things and the prayers at the very end. I'm like, I've never heard these before in my life. Like, I don't know what these are, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. And I'm sitting there and then it the, comes time for the little red book. Okay, I don't know what to do. And this wonderful woman, and, and there all there's also this fear that when um, when you're starting something new, people are going to judge you because you're starting something yeah. new. Like, how do you not know what this red book is? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. Like, do you know what this red book is? Um, so, like, I think that was like part of why I was like delayed in doing things. I was worried that yes, people say like, oh, of course you're welcome, but would I be? You know, like it was yeah, just that this, question always comes that up question. Like, am I really welcome? Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting here and it's time, you know, the red and we're going to be on week four. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. I'm going through. <laughs> <laughs> and a woman was sitting in front of me, Ellen, and she has looked very nicely over her shoulder. She goes, have you ever done this before? And I looked down and I said, no. And I don't know what I thought she was going to say. Like, I don't, I don't know what I thought, but what I didn't expect was her to say, Okay, let me help you. Okay. So she's like, it starts here. Just follow my lead. Like, here's this. Someone will be the antiphoner, and they're going to go through, and then you come back and say this again, and then this page is on the last page, and I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I muddled through it, and it was just this very, it was beautiful. It was evening prayers. That's what the Little Red Book is, is evening prayers. Mm -hmm. We would go through, and you'd say these beautiful psalms and the whole bit, and there's the you know, the left side and the right side and everybody has their part. I realize I'm not doing a good job of explaining what evening prayers are. So you have to come on a Tuesday to experience it. You can sit with me. Come I'll find out what's in how, the red book. I'll show you how to use the red book. I promise. Um, but it was just this really beautiful, just chance to participate and it be mm-hmm. active in, in my faith and sit with Jesus in a way that I had never done before. Wow. So then the next week I come back and one of the women who's always at the Tuesday Rosary has a little pamphlet for me that is the all the prayers of the Rosary. Mm. And I was like, thank you. Well, Anne Marie, who actually wound up going, she went to high school with my husband. So she was like, oh, hey. I'm like, hi. You know, she hands me the this little thing. And I realize I'm all impressed because I think everyone knows everything that I don't. Everybody uses a cheat sheet, Ryan. Oh, yeah. Everybody uses a cheat sheet. Yeah. I'm not 
up behind the game, even when, like, the egg roll goes up. I'm like, wait, no one has this. There's no prize for knowing every prayer by heart. No. You know what I mean? It's about really praying. And I and I realize this is sound, I sound very childlike as I'm saying this, but I was, wait, everybody doesn't know this by heart? Everyone, like, people have cheat sheets and everything's in the back of the missalette. Mm-hmm. What? And I just kept thinking, I just didn't know anything. And instead, I just didn't know where to look. There you go. To, to find what I needed. And I didn't have to worry about it because everything was already there. So that became part of, like, my Tuesday nights. Yeah. I was coming here with a whole group of friends. And, like, just really just people who they would ask, you know, afterwards, once they realized, like, wait, I didn't, like, leave in the middle. I don't, the first, like, two months, I don't think anyone even knew I was there. Because only, like, Deacon Todd because I ran away when I saw him. <laughs> um, but then eventually, like, really became, like, this wonderful group of just very nice people for all different ages, all different, you know, walks of life who just come in and pray together on Tuesday nights. And it has just been so wonderful. And, you know, when new faces come in, I get really excited because I'm like, oh, wait, there's somebody else who's here. And um, I don't know. I just, I would love to see Tuesday nights, just more people mm -hmm. just come over and realize it's the most peaceful hour of hour and 15 minutes of my week. Just wow. sit like it is. It's just, it has become such an important time that I didn't know I needed to just sit in adoration of Jesus, saying the rosary, having some quiet reflection, and then evening prayers. I did not know that my life was missing that until I was 41 years old last year and was, and stumbled into it because I didn't want to power walk wow. <laughs> during track That's practice. That's an awesome story. It's kind of crazy, Praise right? Praise God on that. And you know what? It makes me think we need to have some signs over there on Tuesday nights to say, <laughs> now, now, "Board, come over here." Come over here. Well, now it's at Downingtown. So, like, it was the it was this was the only year. Wow. It wasn't at a track. Was last year, and oh it was my just gosh. you know what I mean. Where so it's just it's such a wonderful time on just when you need to just catch your breath mm -hmm. and just sit and now. I've gotten brave enough where I, in the beginning, it was, there weren't enough people, like everyone was coming in and they would assign decades of the rosary. There's yeah. a woman, Mary, who always kicks off and then she like makes eye contact, like, yeah, you want to do two? All right, you're three. Almost like, um, like you're at like an auction house or something. Oh my like gosh. you over here, you're four, like assigning it. So the one, there weren't that, there was like five people there and she looked, she's like, well, you do three? You want me, you want me to go up there and lead everyone in the rosary? Okay, but now I usually do the second decade. I'm like very, like I go out there, I bring my cheat sheet with me every time because there's nothing like getting in front of a microphone and forgetting the Hail Mary. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? like, out of nervousness, <laughs> it can happen. Just, oh, yeah. It's like... <gasps> you could have said it a hundred times before. and It does not. Like, <laughs> it's, you just get there. And that's why everybody has their cheat sheets. Like even yeah. when you go up, to it, it, it's, it's nerve wracking. Even if there's two people there. Or, you know, hopefully one day the whole church will be full on Tuesdays as we're saying the rosary. Oh, and then the other great thing about Tuesdays. Am I talking too much? No. Keep going. This is, what's, other thing this is what it's about. <laughs> the other thing that's great on Tuesdays, another uh, Marissa confessional, is that Tuesdays are also confession. Yeah. So, again, another, I'm coming in, going to the rosary, the whole thing. I'm, I know that confessions are going on back there. And, really, it had been quite some time mm -hmm. since I had gone into confession and I'm sitting there, the rosary is done, and, you know, there's like 20 minutes between the end of the rosary and before evening prayer start, and I'm, I know Father's back there. Okay, I think I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go to confession, which I had not done in years. And again, when you're expecting, um, when you're expecting something to be, I don't know, like I thought I was going to get in trouble, you know, like these mm -hmm. are the things where you're like, oh my gosh, like it's going to be so disappointing when I go in and I'm like, you know, father, it's been 15 years since my last confession. And instead it was just this wonderfully holy experience where now I'm like, Oh my gosh, why wasn't I going to confession more often? Right. Why did I have all of these thoughts? So now on Tuesdays, it's like this beautiful time to be able to, you know, pray with people who are all together and just, you know, honoring Jesus, 
praying to the Blessed Mother for all the things that we need. You know, being in adoration, going to confession, it is a power-packed hour on Tuesdays. Yeah. That's for sure. We're a big fan of Tuesdays at St. Peter's. Good. And you know what? We should encourage more people to do that, right? I'm telling it's you. It's amazing. It's great. Because at first, you, you've articulated it really nice because at first you're so nervous. You're like, everyone's a pro here. Who am I to be here? All all these negative thoughts, right? Mm-hmm. And then you get there and you realize, hey, everyone else is on a similar journey, right? Everyone else, maybe a little different, but a lot of people don't know things, right? And mm-hmm. people are scared, scared. That's human nature. But God's grace works through that, right? And it's amazing. And I'm so glad to hear that from you. Oh my gosh. I am so, like, I'm just so grateful. It really has, like, in the course of the past year, changed my life in in just a lot of ways where it's, you know, having that happiness and that joy. And I really, I do believe that just having that time sitting in front of Jesus, praying the rosary has, has just, I don't know. It's just, it's made Mm -hmm. me like such just a different, a different, a better person. Yeah. And just a different version of Marissa. Marissa, I'm probably up to like 4.0 at this part. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. That's okay. So how has it affected your daily life beyond Tuesdays? Does it kind of carry over the week? Is that sort of your like reset time? Yes. I mean, of course you have Sundays as well, but. It's, it is a reset. Yes. And it's, it's different from Sunday. Like I do, I love coming, since I've become a Eucharistic minister, an extraordinary minister. There you go. Yeah. Um, and it, and around the same time, like as I was, you know, coming to rosary and, um, just feeling just more connected to, to my faith and just growing. That's when Robin asked me if I would be a, an extraordinary minister. And the minute she was like, would you think about doing this? And I instantly filled up with tears and I was like, yes. You know, like I could, I'm like, this is crazy. Like all these like little pieces are like kind of coming together. And, um, I was so nervous for that too. I asked Danny if he would come with me to mass at 7 a.m. the first time so that I could get to church early when like we got here at like 6 30 to go around because <laughs> I promptly forgot where all the communion stations were. Um, that can happen. And, uh, it can happen. It happens just, to the best of us. I'm like, where are the stairs? Like at the stairs, I'm nervous, but I'm such an awkward person, which even if you're only listening to this on audio, you could definitely pick up on my <laughs> awkwardness. I'm like, I can I really like be trusted to be carrying the body of Christ and walking down steps? Like, this is not a good plan. Thank goodness I have so far been okay. Um, but it was just in the first time I I was able to, to, to give out communion, I got really filled out with tears and got very emotional. Mm-hmm. As you know, I'm giving, as I'm you know, distributing Jesus to people. I'm not even sure if that's the right way to say it. I'm sure there's a better way to, to <laughs> distributing, say it. Yeah, distributing communion. <laughs> you that's know? okay. But um, it's just every time, like, I'm just overwhelmed with this, like, gratitude and joy that this is something that, you know, that I'm able to do. And just, I think, I mean, if you have a chance to sign up to be an extraordinary minister, you should do that too. Like, it's yeah. just such a... It's just, just, it's just been really wonderful this past year. And then, um, what really, so that has changed, you know, my day to day in terms of being more, just making sure that I'm making time and really, um, for thoughtful prayer and not, I'm a big chit chatter with, with God where it's, Mm -hmm. that's where I kind of chit chat with him all day long, but to really have that thoughtful prayer time. Yeah. Like, okay, let me just have dedicated prayer in the morning and in night or before something that's going to be overly stressful. Like, you know, let's, let's just take a second to say a prayer before you go into that. And mm-hmm. I think I've always kind of done that, but now I'm much more thoughtful about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's, I always say it's a, um, oh, what is the turn of phrase I'm thinking of? A concentrated effort. Like this is a, it's like a concentrated, like yeah. Marissa, sit down, slow down, say a prayer. And it's like, okay, <laughs> like it's not, you know, while I'm doing 80 other yeah, things. Yeah, we're always caught up in the day-to-day and yes. the grind. And I know for me, I, I almost like, oh my gosh, I need to sit and spend time with the Lord, right? And when I do that, though, I, I never regret it. You never exactly. regret doing yes. it. And it's just a matter of getting to that point. And that's why I asked you about the reset because when you make that initial decision, the intentional decision, right, yes. to do that, 
it kind of builds on that for the rest of the week and then the month and then so forth, right? I mean, you've you've had a a, a couple few years before that spontaneous mm-hmm. walk into the church moment. A few uh, years, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said 15 years. 41 years. Oh, 41 years. 41 years before I had like that thought, but even 15 years between those. And the only reason I feel like that's a very personal thing to share, like 15 years between yeah. confessions, but I feel like it's really important to share that. Oh, it's super important. Because yeah. I, sometimes it's like you feel like something's been too long or I can't do that. Like you absolutely yeah. can. 15 years, 40 years, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. So... Yeah, honestly, I mean, God is always there waiting for us to to go. And yeah, for anyone out there that maybe it's 15 years, maybe it's 20 years, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. just make that intentional effort, right? And you're you're a great example of that. Yeah. You know, for me, um, you know, I had, I mean, I've shared this on the show before, but I had a certain period of my life where I didn't do anything with the church, right? Mm -hmm. And I checked out. And then I came back, and one of the things that I was worried about was confession, right, and not knowing anything. And I went through prep. I did Catholic school a little bit, but um, I thought, you know what, I I forget how even confession goes, right? How do I do this? Good thing today, though, everyone has the tools, like you said, where to look in your pocket because there's a lot of apps out there that actually walk you through confession. Yes. And priests are okay with you pulling out your phone. I'll be like, hey, when I first, like, started doing this and everything – and getting intentional about it, I was like, hey, do you mind if I use my phone? Because <laughs> I have, like, an app that I use. And they're like, yeah, actually, so many people use this. Uh, and I was like, really? Kind of like what you were saying. Like, everyone uses the cheat sheet. Yes. But th- cheat it's there. Okay yeah, it's in this there. situation. Not in school kids. In- yeah, right? <laughs> if your kids are watching. My kids are listening. They're like, mom said cheat sheets were okay. No, they're not okay. But they're okay when you need something just as, like, a reference when you're at church. God, it's not... Our faith is, is, is not, you know, you're, we're not getting graded on it. To be like, were you accurate when you went into confession? You just have to go with the intention and the right, you know. Yeah. This The, the confidence that you know, God is there waiting to forgive you. Just walk right in. For sure. And it's just been wonderful. Oh, and also, too, if you're new to confession at St. Peter's, you do have the choice to, to kneel behind a screen or... You can sit down chair face to face. And I only know this because uh, one of my girlfriends and I, we went to confession on Friday night. And when father, we were, we did like a little tour of the room beforehand because he was, she wasn't quite sure like what the setup was. Like, I do like the privacy of the screen when you get in there. But when father walked in and saw us sitting there, I started to laugh. I said, I used to go clubbing on Friday nights and (laughs) now I'm at confession. (laughs) I'm like, oh, this is middle age. But it's been absolutely wonderful. But I have to tell you, one of the things I know, um, I feel like I've gotten to know a lot about you Yeah. over the course of the past six months because I'm in a Bible study with your oh, mom. Oh, no. <laughs> I wonder what you found out. <laughs> I know all about race cars, how you got really into racing yeah, yeah. and your trip to China and just all the different things and how very... Um, just how very proud she is of you and both of your sisters of just what wonderful people that you're becoming. And she's been giving some great um, mothering advice, if you will, <laughs> parenting advice on just one of the things that she said is, um, you know, a prayer. And I think this is a really great one. And we'll talk about how I got to know her in just a second. But um, it's always pray that God puts the right people in your path. And that's yeah. a prayer that she said she's always said for you and for your sisters. And I just thought, like, I started to say that as a prayer for my kids. Where I'm like, what a perfect prayer for wow. all of us is please put the right people in your path. And I just, I think that, um, like, that was just such such a good prayer. But I feel like it's funny. The first time, like, you and I, I'm like, hey, Ryan, like, I know you. And meanwhile, you're like, hello, tall woman who is, I'm pretty sure, a parishioner here, but she's waving at me like she knows me. And I'm like, I do. I know your mom. <laughs> yeah, actually, I didn't think a weird tall person. I was like, oh, I wonder I, I, I wonder where I know her from. <laughs> so I like play, I probably played it off. And oh, I'm glad did? at first you did say that you're like, oh, yeah, I know your mom. And so I was like, okay, oh, that's yeah. that's the starting point. But I come in overly familiar where I'm like, hey, <laughs> yeah, how you right? doing? Hi, we've never actually talked before, but I was just looking at pictures of you as like a preteen in race cars, so <laughs> I know all about it. But um, the reason why, one of the things too, you know, we were talking about what we could what we could chat about is that you know, yes, my my rosary and my adoring of adoration 
that is one part. But then um, in the bulletin for years, there would always be things that said like walking with purpose. Mm -hmm. And it was a women's Bible study. I was like, oh, you know, I should do that. But it was on like Tuesdays or Thursdays during the day. And I work and I'm like, oh, that is just not going to, that's not yeah, going to Yeah, it's good for today. retired people at that schedule, right? Yeah, I'm like, oh, this is, I mean, like I, some people, it can work for you, you have flexibility. I just didn't have that flexibility. So then in um, this, this past fall, all of a sudden there was a little blurb where it was going to be offered on Tuesday nights. And I don't know if it was my own voice or if it was the Holy Spirit said, you don't have an excuse. <laughs> like I literally was like, <laughs> yeah, you have two I options have now. An excuse. I think I have to go on Tuesdays. So I signed up for this walking with purpose. First day we get there. I'm, it's like your worst nightmare. I'm like, this is going to be like, I'm not going to know anybody. Everything's like, I, it's been 20 some years since I've been in a religion class. Like I don't, I haven't read the Bible outside of church ever in my life. Like, what mm -hmm. is there going to be a test? I get there. I realize there's a book that goes with the class that I didn't order. And I'm like, this is going to be. So my mom wasn't the only one. <laughs> <laughs> she was saying the same thing. Like, She's like, there's a book. There's a book. I'm like, well, how did I miss this? Oh, my God. This is why I love your mom. So, it's like, you know, we're all sitting there. We're, we're at our different tables. And it's very like, hello, hello, like kind of awkward. They're having like icebreakers. And I'm like, this, this is so weird. But okay. <laughs> So, you know, class is supposed to be like the study, not class. It's supposed to be like two hours long. We're done in like 40 minutes. Like, okay, great. It was nice meeting you guys. Bye. Out the door. <laughs> so the next week I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to go back. So the next week I go back and my book had come in the mail. Thank goodness. It was like seven to 10 days. I'm like, please, Lord, if you can make it be like five, that would be great. It comes in five days. Oh, I have you in time. <laughs> and I didn't pay expedited shipping. Amazing. So I get, uh, I get into class. I get in there and, you know, we're starting and we're all just kind of like feeling it out. Not a hundred percent sure. And, you know, not really we're just uncomfortable, but everybody was uncomfortable. I don't know at what point it shifted from being, you know, this thing that I signed up for to, and it gets, it's on Tuesdays. So my Tuesday nights at St. Peter's are pretty magical. Um, to this, whoa, Ryan, did I bust it? <laughs> no, you're good. I will no longer be invited back for podcasts. She just hit the mic the for those who are listening to I us. I with my hands. It's terrible. <laughs> so anyway, it's okay. Um, so all of a sudden it's this, this, at one point we went from being like this group of people who are really uncomfortable sitting there drinking water and eating all the little bowls of candy and hoping somebody else would answer the question that was asked mm -hmm. to being this wonderful community of, well, not even community. There's only like six of us of just great friends where wow. looking forward to coming each week and really, you know, whatever the lesson is and the lessons in the walking with purpose are really wonderful for women who are looking to, you know, build their faith and build their family and their relationships with everyone. And, you know, really just being women of God. But then at the same time, um, it has just been, it's been fun. Like I didn't expect it to be something that was fun. I don't I, think anybody does. Right. When you no. think, Oh, a church group, is it going to be fun? Is this like... going to be fun? I'm like, why did I sign up for this? It goes from October until April. Oh my gosh. And instead, I really have been enjoying it. Every, you know, it's every Tuesday. Um, and then even we were supposed to have a break over Christmas. We realized we couldn't have a break. I had everybody come over to my house because we were like, well, why oh, don't we just awesome. get together and hang out? And it's just been really um, this, uh, again, this unexpected gift of being able to get together and learn because everything is with, you know, scripture and learning, but in a very manageable way. Yeah. It's not a, um, like laid back, not like you said, yes. no tests, no, no tests. not no strict teaching. Fun fact. If you do take the walking with purpose, I'm taking the open your heart. Um, they do have an answer key in the back Wow, for all the, my life is now filled with cheat sheets. So now <laughs> I don't use it, but it is like, there's an answer key. And then I was, this is wonderful. It's like, everyone's like just planning for adults who are like, I don't understand what this question is, but really it, it explains, it's such a wonderful program to really kind of explain our relationships with God, with Jesus, with Mary, with the Holy Spirit, with each other, with our families mm -hmm. in these very like manageable little lessons where it's, it just, again, it's this, um, 
like weekly appointment, if you will. There's five lessons for each week to just kind of sit down at your own time and at your own pace. Take that deep breath and be prayerful, um, but also like grow and learn in a way that I, I just I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't this in the very best of ways. Wow. And I feel like that has been, that's like my whole, my faith journey of the past yeah. year, like 12 months. Yeah. <laughs> this has been it to be like, huh, well, what do you know? I feel like that, that is like ha- what kind of captures the entire essence of Marissa at church. <laughs> that's awesome. You know <laughs> what? The year. theme that keeps coming up, and I, I noticed this, is that it becomes your own. It's not just something someone else does. It's now yes. yours with the Tuesday nights, right? And then the, the walking with purpose. At first, you felt like an outsider, but now it's your own thing, yeah. and now you guys are a close, small Christian community. Yeah, and I feel like that's when I feel like that's a great lesson for anyone's faith journey and mm-hmm. anything because when it's someone else's faith, whether it be your parents, I know for kids a lot, it's like oh, this is my parents' thing; they forced me to come here. Mm-hmm. But when it becomes your own and it becomes real to you, and then you build a community around that, then your faith is your own. Yes. Right. And it becomes much more clear. It becomes much more enjoyable. And you look forward to this stuff. Yes. Right. I, you know, it's, it really, you're very good at this, Ryan. You make <laughs> Thank this you. Your career. Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're, it really is something that, um, I, it, when it becomes your own, it's just, it is this wonderful surprise, if you will. Like mm-hmm. it's, you know, there are so many ways that God surprises and delights us in the everyday. And this really has been such a, my face hurts from smiling about this where I'm like, oh, <laughs> like it has just been something that is, is so important. And then at the same time, like if I would have listened to my head instead of my heart, I never would have walked into church for yeah. that, those first oh two days. Gosh. Because I was like, I was, we're going to go here. And I automatically assumed I wouldn't be welcomed. Why? Like, I had no evidence that that would ever happen. Yeah. So I just, if anyone um, is ever questioning, you know, whether or not they should come to something or they're not really sure, um, I don't, if we have not had the chance to meet, uh, my name's Marissa. I am six foot two. I'm pretty sure I'm the tallest woman. I didn't in even the realize parish. you were six, over six foot. Oh my God. I'm wow. Gigantic, Ryan. How'd you miss this? I, I'm like the human lighthouse. <laughs> if you ever want someone to wave at, 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 uh, at the sign of peace, you know, now I really do think we should petition for their, I know that we don't do the sign of peace anymore, but I do think we should make the wave of peace a thing because we all do it. <laughs> um, you can feel free to wave at me. I will wave right back. But also if you're ever like unsure about coming to the rosary or, you know, you're not really sure what to do or you want someone to kind of get into the confessional early <laughs> and go poke around so you know exactly where to go. Yeah. I'm here to do that and I'm easy to find. That's my important thing about mentioning how tall I am is because I'm easy to spot in the crowd. That's how God made you. Right there <laughs> exactly. it is. I'm easy to find. So it's like, oh wait, there she is. I'll go sit with her. You can always sit by me. That's awesome. Yeah. And you know what? Here's the other thing. Here's the other component about the fruit of making faith your own. You become a beacon and a light for others, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, okay, I resonate with that girl. I feel exactly how she felt. Let me go talk to her, right? And now yeah. you can then help others and guide them through it. And I, I love hearing that when the body of Christ, the church, yes, is so alive and mission-driven that mm-hmm. that's when it happens, right? Like when parishioners like yourself have gone through some struggles personally and maybe have felt afraid about their faith and, and going forward with it. But then once they do, they become that mentor for so many other people. And I love having an avenue like this because we don't we never know who this is going to go to, like who's yeah. going to hear this or see this. And I guarantee you there's so many people that have felt just like you did. I believe you know? it. And I think, too, it's hard. I'm a bit older than you, Ryan, but let me tell you. <laughs> It's hard to make friends as an adult. Mm. It's hard. Like you just, you have to decide to put yourself out there and decide. And it's like, well, who do I talk to? And I don't even know. And I have, you know, made some wonderful friends through parents at PJP. And then that was sort of where I thought, I'm like, okay, well that like, that's, that's where I make friends now as a mom. But through the church, what I've really, is that I'm making friends as Marissa. 
and it's you know uh, as like as my own person because like when it's you're, tougher when you're a parent because then everything's mom, everything's about attached your kids. To, to the kid and as it should be like that's wonderful and don't get me wrong my mom friends are awesome <laughs> but what I've really what I've enjoyed uh, here is just kind of um, existing as as my own person. Yeah. As, you know, um, as opposed to just like, oh, well, I'm friends because we're always going to be at the same things. And then here, it's, the, it's just, it's different. You know, it's wonderful. Wow. I feel like that didn't come out in the right way. And it sounds like I just dissed my mom friends, but they know that I didn't. Because <laughs> if they're listening, she didn't mean that. Them. I didn't mean it, Vicky. I didn't mean it. <laughs> you know, so I think it's, um, I've just had just, I do, I have some wonderful friends and I'm very grateful for them. It's God, God has put the right people in my path, especially in this past year. Wow. Before I even knew to pray for it, like your mom told us to. Yeah. Isn't that a good prayer? Did you know she said that prayer? I did not. I did not, actually. I should ask her about I that. Sp- did I spell beans? No, it's spell. good beans. Isn't those? Those are good beans. Yeah, those are good beans. Put the right people in your path. That is such a good, and I realized that God has answered that prayer before I even said it this past year for me in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's so cool how, how God actually knows what you need. Before mm-hmm. you even know, and go figure. Yeah, right. God knows what we need before. Or, or like you think, like you said, um, move with your heart, not your mind, mm-hmm. and make decisions based on that. Um, on that same vein, when you're thinking about like life decisions, where it's like career path mm-hmm. or other things in life, if you take a look back, if you're like, hey, I don't see God working in my life, well. If you look back, you might be able to identify where he was Mm -hmm. working. And a lot of times faith makes a lot more sense when you look back and say, hey, you know what? If it went the way I completely wanted it to go, I don't think I would have liked that turnout, right? I mean, you mentioned my racing. For me, I thought I would be racing for the rest of my life, you know, doing that as my profession. That makes my heart pound so fast. That's terrible. (laughs) But looking back (laughs) – he had your a different mom prayed really yeah, hard right? for that not to be your Yeah, life. right. <laughs> he looking back, he had another thing in store for me, mm-hmm. right? And at the time, I never thought it would be working with kids in middle school <laughs> age kids at that. I thought they were annoying. But they are. I mean, they are. <laughs> but now I I feel like the Holy Spirit has prepared me or at least comforts me in that even though even if a class full of kids is annoying one day, you know, I still feel at peace with that. You're so doing it's really cool. Work. <laughs> it is. It's very important. Yeah, work. between the school and here, you know, I, I get to encounter so many kids and parents, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I have your your kid in my class now, and we just got to know each other. But um, yeah, I mean, I get to encounter so many different people, and it's amazing to see stories like this and other countless stories of how God's working in people's lives. Mm-hmm. And um, while working in church world and, and, and school world, especially a Catholic school, there's a lot of tragedy and things that happen yeah. around the community. But also, I mean, it's easy to fixate on that. But it's also important to acknowledge all the good and great things that people are doing in in the face of – with the face of Christ mm-hmm. in hand, right, with God in mind and bringing the face of Christ to all those they encounter. I see that in this community deeply. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you do now that you're getting involved. So thank you for your work. Thank you for your yes in this. Thank you for listening to your heart and not your mind, right? And I'm sure you're going to continue with walking. When does it end? Is it in oh, April? It ends in April. Um, <laughs> we're already talking about other ones, oh, like wow. groups that we can, you know, to start to keep going on um, with it. And then... um I think there'll be another one. I think in um, like in the fall, it'll start again. And they're different programs There's within different... the same program. Don't quiz me on the walking with purpose program. <laughs> I don't know. I just go to the class on Tuesdays. I don't know what baby the whole steps, thing is. Yeah. Baby steps. Ooh, jeez. <laughs> See, you said there wasn't going to be a test. And now What's the one now? What's I'm the one you're current? Open your heart. Open which your is heart. Like the okay. very first one. Okay. Then there's there's ordering your priorities. There's a, a bunch of different ones, but I oh, just encourage cool. anyone just to. I mean, it is a women's study, so I do, if there's any women who are like, you know what, I just, I'm looking, just looking for something that's, that's um, an unexpected treat that helps you have friendships, um, but also at the same time, really grow and learn in your faith. It, it's just been wonderful. I have absolutely loved it and really, um, I'm just, I don't know what my life would be like this 
Marissa 4.0 or whatever I said I was before. 4.0, yeah. 4.0. Um, this past year, the women who I have met as part of our Walking With Purpose have helped shape the woman who I am right now and in the very best of ways. So um, I'm just so grateful for that. And I think if you're nervous about joining any of these things, mm-hmm. just go because everybody is nervous. We're all like, it was almost comical how much it was like, hello. Hi, like, uh, oh my goodness. And it how many so weeks funny. have you been in it so far? Do you know? Like, when when did you October, start? Okay. So and it's, now it's March. <laughs> so now you guys developed pretty in good. five months. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah, we have a text chain. And it's like, if anything ever happens where it's like, you just, you need a little bit of extra, I don't know, love and support at any given time, this is, this is my group to go to. It's like, oh, you know, I'm a little bit nervous. Today, Judy, who's in our, um, who's in it, she sent me a text message. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Good luck with your podcast. <laughs> it's like, you have a <laughs> they knew you were going to podcast? <laughs> like, I mentioned this in passing on Tuesday. Oh, wow. And you remembered to wish me good luck on Thursday. Thank you. Like, we have a lot of great been, people around here. Oh, my gosh. It's been, it has just been such a, such a joy. Awesome. What about last thoughts? Um, people who might be struggling still with, with taking that leap or, you know, maybe they can resonate with some things you said tonight. What would you say to those people as like a kind of final send off of this message here? I would say come to the rosary. If there's one thing that really for me, was whether you come to the rosary or you just say a rosary at home, mm-hmm. like it doesn't, however you need to do it. There's tons of rosaries on YouTube. If you're like, I don't know what all of these are, like mm-hmm. all the different prayers where you can just listen to it, the apps that have it. But making the rosary part of your prayer life and then just see what happens. Because yeah. that coming into the Tuesday rosary shifted my entire life. I was praying to get a new job. I start on April 1st. Wow, like this, congratulations. So this is, you know what I mean? Like things yeah. that like, that just really like thoughtful prayer to say like, Lord, please help me. I need to find something else. And then here's the something else. And it almost feels like, wait, I was praying for the, for the right thing. The job that I'm starting isn't the job that I was praying about. (laughs) Isn't that amazing when you look back, right? It's like, Hey, thanks. As soon as you were saying it, it's like, Oh, that wasn't what I was praying for, but you know what? It's even better. So I think, you know, just having that time with the blessed mother, that thoughtful time. But if you do wind up coming to the rosary, come sit by me. You're more than (laughs) welcome to. I usually sit in the last row on the, when you're looking at the altar on the left hand side, you can't miss me. But anywhere you go, everyone has been, they're so wonderful. And just, it's just been absolutely great. And you can always borrow my cheat sheet. There you go. So I guess that's one lesson. Look for the cheat sheets. Oh, yeah. That's the first thing you should do. <laughs> and speaking, I, I should make a cheat sheet and just leave it in the back of the of There the you go. I think I'm going to do that. I actually have a whole folder on my phone for like faith apps. And one of them is called is Laudate. Yes, L-A-U-D-A-T-E. Oh, well, sorry. Spell that again because I totally talked over you. L-A-U-D-A-T-E. So in there, they have a lot of things like guided confession. Mm-hmm. They have the rosaries. They have all the, all the mysteries, daily readings. Ooh, who the saint of the day is. I do love a saint of the day. Yeah, so you use this app. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. And then also there's this cool app called Amen. We've been promoting it at the church. Um, it's you, They follow the daily readings. Okay. They have meditation, prayer, a lot of other things, like even like sleep prayer meditations and stuff if you like want to do that but one of the the best feature in my opinion is during the reflections if something comes up there's a journal on there and you click it and you start typing if something comes up in prayer and then it logs it with the date and the readings so that if you ever like a year from now when i look back and be like hey what was i thinking or what was i praying about at that time you can look back and look at the journal so I've been using it um, past couple weeks. It's really nice. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, it's a man app in the narthex of the church or in the hallway here. You can just scan the QR code and download it. Look at all this technology yeah, right? helping us with our faith. Yeah, so <laughs> highly recommend. Look on the app store, like Catholic apps, and then just kind of scroll through and see what works for you. Because, I mean, you use the Laudate app. I do, and I also have Hallow. Hollow, yes, I have that on here too. It's similar to Amen. We have all the apps. Yeah, it's similar to Amen. Um, there's the Ibrevery. Uh, 
There's a lot of different stuff. Formed, it's like the Catholic yeah. Netflix. And there's a lot of really Catholic Netflix. I love that. <laughs> and I think um, I still have to watch. Your mother has been telling me how good The Chosen oh, is. Oh, The Chosen, yes. I know. I need to. I need to really do that. And then, ooh, we should, we should have like a viewing. We should have it and then have like a discussion group about it. That would be nice. You know, like people like to talk about all the t- trash TV that we watch because I do watch all the bad, like all the <laughs> yeah. stuff that does not do anything to improve my mind or my soul. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, but it's so good. <laughs> I need to do more of the, you know, thoughtful consumption of you know religious entertainment as opposed to just inventing Anna, which has been very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hear you, right? I mean, YouTube kind of gets me sometimes when i'm looking at some videos even like movie recaps but to sit back like the chosen is such a good show there are two seasons it's completely free um you just hit the watch tab on their website look up the chosen series online and they're actually filming i think season three or they're crowdfunding for it um but yeah it's amazing it's about the people jesus chose and that's you and i right it's like you and i so it makes it very personal like you can see Jesus's motions, his apostles, and they're kind of bickering and how he formed his apostles, you know, and how he, he chose them to do great things. But maybe they didn't really see that at first. Right. And so isn't that how we are as people right mm-hmm. today of the church? We are so confused, conflicted, nervous, things like that. But then there's Jesus, his, our rock. Like he's he's what we should be found it, uh, our foundation. He's our foundation. Mm-hmm. And. He guides us through it all, and we've seen it today with you. I've shared a lot of my story on this show, and we're hearing countless others share theirs. So thank you for coming on to the show today. I hope you can come back on because you're really entertaining, <laughs> uh, to be honest. And I would love to interview about other topics as well. So I got lots of material. There we go. There we go. Because I would want to. I want to dive into maybe your Catholic school experience. Oh, you know, then into adulthood, how that goes. But stay tuned for another. Sixteen years of Catholic yeah, school. Yeah, stay we got tuned lots to talk about. for another episode because hopefully we can talk about that. Thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah. So thank you again. If you guys want to come on, did you have fun today? I had a great time. Good. Because <laughs> if if you guys want to come on, if anyone's listening, hey, I want to come on and talk about whatever uh email media at stpeterchurch.net that is media at stpeterchurch.net and we'll schedule a time to talk about the topic and then we'll schedule a time to film i mean this was a pretty simple process this is your first time on you had a good time and countless others right all of you guys have stories and we want to be real about it okay so we talk about life culture and faith and we be genuine, right? This is a genuine conversation, not really scripted. We had an outline, but I didn't really follow it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had an outline, and I was like, you know what? Just keep going, keep going. I wing it. I <laughs> things. We're just gonna wing it here, people. Yeah, it's laid back, uh, laid back conversation. So come on the show, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.